Yes, hello, good morning. You're watching the Sunday politics for Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. Coming up today, Labour holds on in its northern stronghold, but will that be enough to silence Corbyn's critics? Sunday Politics is live in Rotherham this morning. How will Labour rebuild its reputation in the town after recent scandals? And Scargill speaks out. The former miners' leader tells us why he thinks Jeremy Corbyn has got it wrong on Europe. I'm saddened and disgusted with the way that he's behaved in these U-turns on fundamental policies. Joining us live today are Diana Johnson, Labour MP for Hull North, Stuart Andrew, Conservative MP for Pudsey, and Mike Hookham, UKIP MEP for Yorkshire and Northern Lincolnshire. Hello to you all. Diana Johnson, is it acceptable for Jeremy Corbyn to welcome the fact that Labour has hung on? Surely opposition parties should be winning council seats. Well, it could have been a lot worse. But we definitely need to do better if we're going to form the next government in 2020. But there were successes around the region. You know, the, the Humberside Police and Crime Commissioner now is a Labour uh, PCC. I welcome that. Sheffield, we had that great result for Jill Furness in the parliamentary by-election. Rotherham, we're about to discuss. I mean, that's a Labour council once again, a strong Labour council. And, of course, the Mayor of London... Uh, you know, with Sadiq Khan. So real success is to celebrate, but we do need to do a lot better. And um, I think it's very interesting that Tom Watson in today's papers is talking about the mountain that we have to climb before we get to 2020. And Sadiq Khan again is saying today, Labour needs to be out there talking about the issues that affect people uh, on their everyday lives, social care, care for the elderly, the NHS, rising crime levels, all these issues we should be talking about. And also, I think we need to engage with people who don't automatically vote Labour, people who've perhaps voted Tory or Lib Dem in the past. We need to be talking to them as well. Yeah, Stuart, Andrew, the Labour vote held up, it, it, certainly in most of Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. I mean, is perhaps Labour under Jeremy Corbyn stronger than many, including in your own party, predicted it would be? Well, I would have expected, frankly, uh, you know, a new leader of a part, an opposition party that is facing a government that's been there for six years to have done a lot better than this. There is no sign of any honeymoon period at all, um, and I would have expected them to have some serious gains. If you look at my seat, for example, the overall vote, we were ahead, again, uh, in the highly marginal constituency. So, actually, I think there's a lot of work for, for Labour to do. I think Diana's right, they have got a mountain to climb. But, uh, you know, we're not complacent. We've got a lot of work to do, too. Mike Hooker, what, what's happened to the UKIP surge? Because you're just not winning council seats like you have been in the last few years, are you? Well, you say that. I mean, we, we've held on to the seats that we had. We've, we've increased in, in one or two areas. Uh, nationally, we're up 23 seats. And you know, I'm very pleased with the, uh, with the result that we got. I mean, you've got to remember how people are grassroots, uh, grassroots people out there doing it on their own money with their own... They're on time. They, they, they haven't got the money of the unions, they haven't got the money of the big businesses. So we're, we're still there, we're going nowhere, we're going to keep pushing and we're going to keep, you know, keep taking those seats. And we're taking the seats, remember, from the Labour areas. Well, stay with us for the Sunday politics in Yorkshire and Lincolnshire because in a moment we'll be live in Rotherham where Len Tingle is standing by with his guests. But first, Len rounds up the election highlights from across Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. Labour was predicted to do badly across Yorkshire, but tell that to Jill Furness. Jill Furness, I've been duly elected. <laughs> the widow of former Sheffield, Brightside and Hillsborough MP Harry Harpham, whose tragic death from cancer caused the by-election, romped home to retain his seat, leaving UKIP trailing a distant second. Just never this time, you know, last year did we imagine that I'd be here at the moment, but... I'm very proud of what I've done. Harry would have been very proud that I, you know, t stood up to the plate and took the, you know, took the battle and got a fabulous majority, even better than his in terms of percentages. UKIP had been predicting it was going to squeeze Labour hard, particularly in council elections in South Yorkshire. It wasn't so much a squeeze as a pretty soft hug. This was the count in Rotherham, where UKIP had its highest hopes. The government had ordered full elections this year to give a fresh start to the Labour-dominated council that had been unable to cope with the scandal of grooming and sexual exploitation in the town. UKIP went into the election with 12 of the council's 63 seats. It finished up with just two more. 
Labour took 48. Well, I think the first thing is that we do have new people. They come with fresh faces, fresh ideas, and also they come against that backdrop. These are people elected knowing that the task they face is to make sure the council can't make these mistakes again. Yeah! In fact, despite losses elsewhere in the country, Labour councillors held on across Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. This was Hull, where Labour retained control, as it did in Lincoln. But there were also rare smiles on the faces of Liberal Democrats. A mini-revival, perhaps. A handful of extra seats in Hull and Sheffield. For the party, it's a start. We've had tough times, but what the results in Hull show is that people in Hull want change. And more often than not, it's the Liberal Democrats who are providing it. And in the next two years, we're going to be doing more of the same. In fact, the only big post that swapped hands was a Labour gain. The Humberside Police and Crime Commissioner, Conservative Matthew Grove, lost his job as former senior policeman Keith Hunter was voted in. It's not just fighting crime, it's about confidence in the police, and it's about building the links between the force and the communities that they serve. Elsewhere, two other current police and crime commissioners retain their jobs. Alan Billings in South Yorkshire, Mark Burns-Williamson in West Yorkshire. In Lincolnshire, Conservative Mark Jones took the job. He replaces the region's only independent commissioner, who decided not to stand for re-election this time. Well, you join me right outside Rotherham Town Hall, a town hall dominated by Labour since the 1930s, and after those elections, still dominated by Labour. I'm joined by Cavan Vines, the spokesperson for UKIP, uh, and by Chris Reid, the leader of Rotherham Council. Chris Reid, you did pretty well in those elections, but you've still got some convincing to do, particularly the government, because a lot of your functions here in Rotherham are still run by, directly by the government. Yeah, thank you, Link. Can I start by saying thank you to all the people in Rotherham who gave us their support this week? We've seen a year's worth of changes in Rotherham now since the government's intervention began, and people have put their trust in us to make those changes over the next four years. We do have to prove to the government that we're now fit and proper to be running the council. We've taken back about a third of the powers from commissioners. They'll be making their assessment over each of the three months coming forward, and we'll see where we are from there, but I think we're making good progress. But um, this was meant to be a, a new start for Labour here in Rotherham. Many of the councillors that were re-elected are very, very older, familiar faces, and you were supposed to be having some sort of investigation into the four councillors that were suspended at the height of the grooming scandal. It hasn't happened, has it? Well, there have been significant changes in the number of people coming forward, Len. So a third of our candidates, more than a third of our candidates, were people who never stood for election before, uh, not in Rotherham and not anywhere else. So there have been big changes. All those people who did stand have been subject to an interview by the National Executive Committee of the Labour Party. They've been properly vetted. And now, most importantly, they've been supported by their electorates. The Labour Party does continue to investigate uh, two of those ex-councillors, as I understand it. I can't comment on that. That's an investigation that's separate from me. Kevin Vines, I, I deliberately called you UKIP spokesman because you were a councillor here until election day, you lost your seat and UKIP did not do as well as expected. What's, what's happened? Well, I don't think a lot's happened, Len. To be, we're, we're a very young party in Rotherham. I mean, it's only the last three years we've had a representation and I think any party to go from zero up to 14 in three years in an, a, 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 such a staunch Labour-held uh, town is not doing too bad. But you can't have much more of an advantage given to you on a plate, can you? The grooming scandal you were meant to do far better than that. You just picked up two seats. Well, that's Rotherham for you, isn't it? You know, pin a red rose and a donkey, and they'll vote for it. I mean, that's still the old assage here. But what really is, you talk about coming, they still come to the to tables with dirty hands. There's at least six of them councillors were part of that grooming scandal, and they're still in there. Why? I just can't understand that. I just cannot understand the people of Rotherham voting for people like that. Chris Reid, that is really... The issue, isn't it, that you've really got to prove that your party has got clean hands to run Rotherham. And I think that's exactly what we're doing, Len, to be fair. We've seen a whole new team of people leading uh, the political leadership of the council, new people leading on the officer side of the council. And as I say, those people who are now our councillors have been vetted by the Labour Party and, most importantly, approved by their local residents, the people who know them best. Chris Reid, Kevin Vines, thank you very much. And from here in Rotherham, a Rotherham that in a sense starts afresh next week, it's back to you in the studio. Len, thank you. Just picking up on that, Mike Hookham, in, in Rotherham, many in your party hope with all our elections there this was your big chance to topple Labour. You failed, didn't you? 
Well, as, as uh, Kevin said there, I mean, you know, we, we've now got 14 people in there that we, had, we only had 12 before. I think we've done very, very well. We've got to look at, again, we've, many, many of those candidates came a very, very good second. You know, we haven't got across the, uh, across the winning line, but we're still there, we're still fighting, and uh, we will carry on, and, you know, it's you know, slowly, slowly catchy monkey. We will, we will get across that line, and we will take those seats. Diana Johnson, I mean, the turnout in the local elections was pretty dismal in, in most places. I mean, Hull has some of the worst performing areas in the whole country. Was this really an accurate test of public opinion? Well, we know that uh, throughout the country, people had to vote in one way or another, whether it was for a PCC or whether it was in local elections uh, or parliamentary by-elections. So it gives us a flavour of what the country's thinking at the moment. And as I said, I mean, turnout in Hull is is low. I mean, in the general election, it was just over 50%. And that worries me a great deal because people need to express their views. People need to have uh, their say. So I always encourage people to vote. And of course, Jeremy Corbyn in the leadership election, his, his great call was that he would be able to get people out to vote. So we still have some way to go to encourage everybody to exercise their vote, particularly young people. And I think what's happening with the government at the moment, particularly the policies they're pursuing, are the ones that are affecting young people people the most so I really do think young people need to get out there and have their say is that, but, but is that, with respect but right. with respect in Hull nearly 80% of people in Hull never voted for Labour I mean that's that's really poor these we, we that, have to we have to bring right. people out I have a majority well, what was it saying that was only 22% or well, something? Well, I have a majority of 12,899, so no, I don't see how... No, I'm on about the council elections. 22% turnout, I think it was, on the night. In some wards where there were only PCCs, because, of course, we, we, we had uh, just third elections. The whole council wasn't out for, up for election this time. So there were particular wards where it was just the police and crime commissioner elections, and turnout, just as when they were created, was very low. Yes, I agree with that. I mean, police and crime commissioner elections, I mean, in many areas, three-quarters of people didn't bother to vote. I mean, is the government going to look again at, about whether these are a good idea? Well, I mean, I think we, you know, we should always review these things, but I think we can, you can put too much emphasis on the results of these elections and think that you know, it gives an indication of what will happen in the next general election. The fact is that that isn't the case, although I w will repeat the point that I would have expected, I was expecting us to do a lot worse than we actually did. I was quite uh, pleased with the way that we did, particularly around the country. And, and you know, look at the result in Scotland. If I'd have said to you 18 months ago, that we were going to become the official opposition and push Labour into third place, you would have probably laughed at me. Um, and for us to achieve that in mid-term government, I think is quite uh, superb. Really. Has Jeremy Corbyn done enough to fend off critics in your party who want him out for now? Look, he's been the leader for eight months. So, you know, it's far too early to be talking about that. What we do need to do as a parliamentary Labour Party and as the leadership is to make sure that we are out there talking to voters about the concerns that they actually have, coming up with policies that address those concerns. So, for example, around uh, education. You know, the government have had a, an, a, a this week, have you turned on this uh, policy of forced academisation? Very pleased on that. We need to be talking to parents about the fact that there's so many children now in overcrowded classes, there's a recruitment crisis, in teaching. These are the issues that Labour now has to be talking to people about. I think the problem, though, for Labour is that they're not talking about that because they have serious divisions within the party. Um, there is a real problem for them. I mean, there are people within the Parliamentary Party who, you know, prob have real issues with the fact that Jeremy Corbyn is leader, but they recognise that the party membership, the ones that put him there, will not face that, the will vast, not put up with that. Can I just say to you, the vast majority of the Parliamentary Labour Party want to make sure that we return a Labour government in 2020. We are united in that. Now, there may be one or two people who criticise the leadership, but the vast majority of us are basically wanting to do whatever we can to ensure we're back in government and put a stop to some of the horrendous policies that this government are introducing. Can, can I just ask you, Stuart Andrew, about an issue which is very important and in the news right now because West Yorkshire Police have launched an investigation into allegations that the laws surrounding election expenses were broken in your constituency mm. during last year's general election. This is to do with the battle bus mm. tour. Are you liaising with the police on this? Well, look, let me make it very, very clear. In any election, there are very tight rules. We have a local spend that we have a limit on, and we returned that and showed exactly what we'd spent our money on. There is also a national spend that all political parties have that provides um, support around the whole country, you know, pushing for a return of a, in our case, a Conservative government, and the battle bus was in that return. Is there a case to answer? No. 
After a tricky few weeks for Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour leader might hope from, for some encouragement from those on the left of British politics, but he won't be able to count on the support of former miners leader Arthur Scargill. In an exclusive interview with the Sunday Politics Yorkshire and Lincolnshire, Arthur Scargill talks about demands for a public inquiry into Wargreave, why he thinks we should leave the EU and why he's accused Mr Corbyn of abandoning his principles. whatsoever I can only speak uh, on a personal level what I saw what I heard and uh, in many cases what people saw on television screens the police brutality at Orgreave demands that an investigation takes place I accuse Mrs Thatcher Leon Britton and the government of giving direction to South Yorkshire police that policy was put into operation and as a result of that many people were injured some very severely and hundreds of people were arrested don't forget they lied about pit closures and they lied about what happened at Aubrey I don't understand how anybody who claims to be a socialist can claim its right to stay in the European Union we've been landed with VAT value added tax which means that an old age pensioner has to pay the same tax as a multimillionaire or a billionaire can't be right we've been landed with policies that quite frankly have affected our pensions our steelworks our coal mines our uh, uh, car manufacturers engineering light and heavy all have gone I don't think Jeremy Corbyn is getting his message across because it's the wrong message. The working class of Britain, whether they be in a pit, a factory, a call centre, need trade unions like never before. The message he should be putting forward is the one that he stood on the platform and argued over, what, 20, 30 years, alongside Tony, Ben and myself. And that is we should be coming out of the European Union. He should be calling upon people to vote no. Secondly, you should be very clear and say the party's policy is now clearly to scrap Trident. The evidence, 60% or thereabouts voted for Jeremy Corbyn to be leader of the Labour Party on a platform that included all of these demands. And quite frankly, he's done a U-turn. And I'm sorry to say I'm saddened and disgusted with the way that he's behaved in these U-turns on fundamental policies. Welcome to the Manchester May Day Festival Rally, Arthur Scarby. No way! Listen, no! No way! Listen, no way! Well, that was Arthur Scargill there, and of course, over the coming weeks. In the run-up to the EU referendum, we'll be uh, hearing from both the uh, Leave and Remain sides. But, Mike Hookham, interesting there, Arthur Scargill wants us to leave the EU. Would you campaign alongside him? Well, I mean, although we're, I'm diametrically opposed uh, politically with him, he comes up with some very good points there. Uh, you know, if we stay in the European Union, we'll lose all our heavy light industry, we will lose... Uh, you know, our, en our energy will be wind turbines, which are not very good to anybody, uh, and it will be, you know, we really need to come out, and, and Arthur's right. And let's, let's look at uh, Mr Corbyn, who spent his political life uh, speaking against the European Union, and now he's, uh, now he's leader, he wants to stay in. And you know, we have to say, you've got you've to make a choice. Do you want a European Union, or do you want an NHS? Because you can't have both. Is that the straight choice we're facing, well, Diana Johnson? Can I just say, I am appalled that uh, a UKIP MEP is saying that wind turbines are, not, are no use to anyone, when actually part of the regeneration of Hull is about wind turbines being built in the city and being shipped out to the North Sea for offshore renewable energy. I just find that incredible that he's dismissing something that's so important to my city. That's the first thing. Secondly, I, I have to say that, you know, Arthur Scargill obviously has his views about things, but, you know, he's from the 1970s. It seems to me he's definitely uh, a man of, you know, 30-odd years ago. He's not a man who's looking forward to 2016 and beyond and what the future of this country is about.
it. Stuart Andrew, I know you were undecided mm. for a long time on which side to support, but you recently came out as a, as a Brexit supporter. Mm. What convinced you? I gave it a lot of thought, and I, um, I've, I've came to the conclusion that actually what I wanted to see was real reform, and the reform that's been offered is, is a step in the right direction, but it's not far enough as far as I'm concerned. I, I'm, I'm a Democrat, you know, I want to see people having uh, the choice over their own lives to be able to elect representatives that they can, you know, uh, have a working relationship with, and I'm afraid that it feels like the Brussels government that is growing and growing is too remote from, from the British people. Mike, Mike Hookham, you're, you're a former military man. Uh, what do you make of this claim today from two former senior intelligence officers who say security, Britain's security, will be put at risk if we left the EU? Well, it puzzles me because I, I sit on the Defence Committee and, you know, there was a recent report out that said over 50% of the member states don't share intelligence. And this came on the back of the Brussels bombing. So, you know... We need to look into this. Now, I'm, I'm quite sure this is just a part of the, the project fear that we're getting before the, the 23rd of June. I, I think it's right, actually, that all these issues are uh, put out there for people to, to reflect on and think about. Because certainly in Hull, when I talk to people, they're saying they want to know what, what are the facts, what, what will be the implications. And I think the real problem with the, the people who want to withdraw from the EU is that it's so risky, nobody really knows. And I think that risk factor is the big issue for a lot of my constituents. But security and sharing intelligence is, is absolutely vital in a world that's so interconnected and that, you know, we have ferries every day that come across from the, from from Europe into Hull and we want to know that you know intelligence is being shared about the people who are coming in who might potentially want to do us harm so I think we do need to heed the warnings of these people who who know exactly what the position is in terms of intelligence sharing are we safer in or out of the EU when it comes to our security well, I have to say I, I just don't understand this argument because if there is a serious threat there is no way that countries are not going to share that in intelligence yeah, um, just because we're either a member or not of the EU. It is our duty. If we know something about somebody who is going to travel to another country to, create, uh, to cause a terrorist attack, it is our duty to protect those citizens. And I just don't hold with that argument. Very briefly now, we're pretty much going to be full on into the EU referendum campaign. Just give, all of you, just give us a prediction what you think the final vote will be. Mike Hookham. I think it'll be tight, but I think the, the vote will go for, for Brexit. I think people are realising now the project fears on the go, and I think they will look at the uh, at what's happening. And I think they're going to vote to come out. Diana well, I'm hoping over the next seven weeks we're actually going to get the facts out there, and people will really understand what the implications of leaving will be. So I think we will vote to stay in. What's the vote going to be? I think it's probably just going to be to stay in. All right. Thank you all for your time today. To Diana Johnson, Stuart Andrew, and Mike Hookham. And now, with the time just gone, 12 midday, I'll hand you back to uh, Andrew Neil in London.